Bienvenidos! Hey everybody, I am Andrew Hockrottle. Jesus Ramirez. We got it. Uh, and this is Adobe Live. Today we're going to be hanging out and doing some awesome stuff in Photoshop, Photoshop with our friend Jesus. If you are coming in from our Discord, go ahead and leave us a purple heart mm. in the chat. Um, and I like that my shirt's cut off, so it just says make friends with skeletons. Oh, yeah. What does the bottom part say? It says it makes make friends with the skeletons in your closet. Oh, in your closet. There we got go. It, got uh, it. Trump brand. Yeah, we're we're yeah. very on brand today. <laughs> Uh, nice to see you today. Hey, Seuss, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, oh, what you do, all that fun um, stuff. You know what? This is always the most difficult part for me because I always want to get to the Photoshop right away, so I try to keep it short and simple. Yes. My name is Jesus Ramirez. I am a, I've been a graphic artist for almost 20 years, Andrew. Oh, my, my God. goodness. Almost, wow. 18. Um, I primarily teach Photoshop these days on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called the Photoshop Training Channel with over 2 million subscribers. I'm still a working professional. I do uh, what's called finishing, which is creating uh, film and TV posters okay. um, with uh, one of my business partners is Lisa Carney, who's been a guest on the show. Love Lisa. Uh, yeah, Lisa's fantastic. And yeah, I I spend most of my day in Photoshop and I like to show the, the random knowledge that I have with this amazing app. Sweet, speaking of random knowledge, let's hop in and check out some random knowledge chat. As always, if you have questions, if you have suggestions, let us know in the chat. We are here together for the next hour or so, mm -hmm. helping you with anything that you need. We're gonna show you some really cool stuff. Um, and then after the stream, I'll be joining you for some stuff in Illustrator. We'll be building some fun animated GIFs using Illustrator and Express. Mm -hmm. So stick around for the next few hours. You're stuck with us. You can't go anywhere else. Cannot, cannot. Um, you can't right. even close the browser. You can't. Stay open. Uh, what are we doing here? We are running in San Diego. We are running in San Diego. I'm glad you knew where that was. It, so is it San Diego? Good. I don't know. It looks like San Diego. <laughs> it does look like San Diego. Let we'll us know in the Diego. chat if you know where this is. Yes. Um, now, before we get to this, um, right before we started, we were talking about how I just know a lot of random Photoshop knowledge, and I just wanted to drop something in here that I'm pretty sure nobody's going to ever use, but the feature is there in case you ever need it. Okay, So I, yes. so I want to show something random, and I'll try to show as many random Photoshop tips and tricks. JIC, as, we, as they say, just in case. Just in case, just yeah, in case. just in case. So everybody knows the good uh, old file, new menu, and from here you can select the different uh, units of measurements, right? So maybe you want to work in inches, uh, points or, or whatever, right? Hey, Suze, what are PICAS? I don't know. Okay, that, <laughs> I, that is the correct answer. Okay, sorry, keep going. Well, chat, if you know what PICAS are or if you can like Google it for us, please educate us all because we don't know and we never work in them, but they exist Yeah, there. please please let us know. Yes. Um, I assume it has something to do with printing, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, anyway, so what, what if you wanted to work in pixels for the width and in PICAS for the height? What do you do? Well, here's a trick that nobody will ever need. You press Control K and Windows Command K on the Mac, and you click on Use Legacy New Document Interface. Okay. You press OK. Now, when you go into File and New, you'll get the Legacy New Window menu. And from here, like we said, pixels for width. And if we want to select PICAS, it will switch the top one. But if we hold Shift, Click on the drop down menu and select pixels. Now you can work with pixels on top, pikas on the bottom. So, this is what I mean. That I have is, a ton of random Photoshop uh, knowledge <laughs> that I'm just going to start dropping it throughout the stream. That is absolutely <laughs> useless, but like good to know. Right. Like, right. there's no use case that you would ever use that. But, but if, you, if somebody gave you a random note and said, hey, we use pikas for width and yes. pixels for this, now you can input yes. it correctly, right? Amazing. Um, okay, and someone in uh, Sam Peterson is saying a pica is a typesetting unit of measurement commonly used for measuring lines of type. One pica equals 12 points, and there's six picas to an inch. Okay, so I'll give you some uh, extra context to that. And hey, Suze, we can hop into Photoshop. You guys know sure. all of history. So, um, Unseals. That is probably where the pica comes mm. from. Is an unseal is uh, basically where we get our lowercase alphabet, mm -hmm. and they invented it so that it was an inch, uh, so that they would be able to fit more letters on the page. And then there was the semi unseal, which became lowercase. So unseals were uppercase, semi unseal was mm -hmm. lowercase. And I'm guessing that has eventually translated to picas, that it is 12 mm. point and 6 point wow. from the inches on down. So. History there. Yeah. All right. I think you guys should hit that like button on Behance that I don't know what it does, but I think that explanation was worth that like button. Does I you agree. guys ever measure that? I don't History know. History is my favorite. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's all right, hop so in Photoshop. and do some stuff in Photoshop. Yeah. So, um, you know, everyone is obviously very interested with Gen AI to remove objects from a photo, but something that I would advise people to do when working with photography, for example, in, in this particular shot, there's no, you know, background elements that are distracting that we want to remove is, is a, a you know good enough photo. But 
Um, what I like to recommend people to do is to actually re separate the background and the foreground into different layers because then it makes it much easier to work with when yes. working with photography in general. So even though we're going to end up with basically this photo, separating objects from the background is always a good idea. Yes, and especially with the capabilities of like Adobe Express, mm -hmm. of working in uh, After yes. Effects, yes. having them as separate objects like just makes everything yes. easier just in case you want to animate, add text, Absolutely. have some separation. So let's see how to do that easily. Yeah, so there's um, you know, a lot of ways you can do things in Photoshop, obviously. But now with our friend here, the taskbar, you can click on Select Subject, and that will create a selection using artificial intelligence to analyze the object. And it'll take a second here. I don't know why it's taking this long. I always ask. like that when I click on that, I always expect to have to go back in mm -hmm. and be like, okay, like it's going to find a subject. And then I do it, and it's like, here you go. I'm yeah. like, oh, it just it works so well. Yeah. Um, here's another pro trick. Uh, um, you can press the Q key to enter the quick mask mode. Yes. The quick mask mode allows you to se uh, select things by painting with either black or white. White makes things, uh, it keeps things. So if, if I were to paint with white, I'm going to select the brush tool here, make sure that white is my foreground color. When I paint, now I'm keeping that part of the image. If I press the Q key again, you'll notice the selection around it. To delete things, oh. or hide things, I should say, it's a better word, hiding. I'm not deleting, I'm hiding. I can paint with black, and it hides that part of the image. Pressing the Q key again, uh, you know, makes that sel uh, the selection here disappear, and it's only around our runner here. Now, this is the, the Pro Advanced trick. Um, the selection is good, but what I really want is I want to really select the edges. See how they didn't quite select her shoe? Yes. And yes, of course, I can press the Q key and then paint with Y, you know, use the bracket keys on my keyboard to reduce my brush size and paint and with white and, and you know. Quick little tip, if you are doing masking like this and you're using black and white, you can actually hit X mm -hmm. to change back and forth between the black and white. And so if you get in that workflow of using those hotkeys, B for the brush and mm -hmm. then hitting X, it's really Absolutely. quick to be able to just like mask things in Absolutely. And, and if you don't like keyboard shortcuts, you can just click on this little arrow here and Boop. it does the same thing. But yes. the keyboard shortcut, as Andrew was mentioning, is, is the way to go. Now, um, I want, it'll be a lot easier if I can just expand a select right? So I, I'm sure that a lot of people in the stream probably know this. If you go into select, modify, and expand, you can expand by a number of pixels, right? But the downside here is that I don't know what, you know, what, what is six pixels? Is that too much or not enough? Right. Okay, that's probably good, right? But maybe not. Maybe I want to, I want to contract it more, or maybe I want to expand it more. The problem is, is that it's, it's you know, you just, it's try and error at yes. the end of the day, right? And if you are doing the expansions and stuff, that is in the contextual toolbar now, um, which is so nice. Anytime you make a selection, it is right there for you to expand or contract so right. you don't have to go through all the menus. Uh, that's been my favorite part about the contextual toolbar because I do that all the time. Right. And there's actually another downside, Andrew. Like, what if six is too high, but five is too, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, six is too too much and five is not enough and you want to do like 5.2 or something like that. Can you not do you mediums? You cannot do. Oh. Like, so like 5.2, right? And press OK. Nope. It's got to be a whole number. Interesting. So what do you do? How can we solve those two issues? Visually see the selection expanding and contracting and being able to do uh, decimal points. Yep. So there's actually a pro trick. Press the Q key once again. Okay. We enter the quick mask mode, then go into filter, other, and you can choose maximum to expand and minimum to contract. So in this case, I want to expand. And now I can change the preserve to roundness, and notice I get a decimal point. So now when I expand my selection, see how I can preview <sighs> what that is? So now I know exactly what six pixels looks like. Oh, wait, what, six is too much? Five is not enough? Well, let's do 5.3 and see what that looks like. You know? Wait, that's so good. There it is, right? So then when I press OK, and press the Q key one more time, now I have a selection. It's augmented the selection. Absolutely. So oh that is goodness. another pro trick for you guys to really be able to see the selections expanding and contracting. And get super clean super edges. Super clean edges, yeah. right? Absolutely. And that's a very good point, Andrew. So the algorithm for the minimum and maximum filter is better to expand and contract. Uh, it, it was actually designed to expand and contract masks. But since we're in the quick mask mode, we're tricking it into thinking that it's um, you know, a mask, not a selection. Yes. Um, and the um, contract mode, the algorithm is not as good for expanding as selecting. It'll create better edges this way. So it'll, it'll be more faithful to the edge of your selection by using the minimum and maximum filter. So at this point, um, I think my selection is good enough. Um, We'll just call this good. We've been spending too much time on this particular step. <laughs> so I'm just going to go into the generator fill 
And, oh, I guess I gotta click on a, agree. Actually, this is a brand new laptop, first time I'm using it. Thank you to my good friends at oh. MSI for sending that over to me. It just came in, brand new laptop. So now I'm just gonna click on uh, generate and Photoshop is going to, since I didn't put anything in, Photoshop is just going to uh, try to remove the subject from this photo. And it will take a second here. This is going up to the cloud. You do need to have an internet connection for this. It does a fantastic job. You can look for the different variations to see which one you know works better. In this case, it really doesn't matter. They, yeah. all, they all work pretty well. But I'm so surprised that it kept some of that shadow in there. Oh, they wasn't in the selection, right? Oh, you're, oh my goodness, yeah. you're right. It, it wasn't in the selection, yeah. right? <laughs> That's so then the next step would be just <clears> that, right? Just uh, fix any imperfections, right? So we can come in here and then just remove the, the shadow. I was more concerned with the main subject. Yep. And now I can create a whole nother generation just for the shadow. And yep. something that I, I do recommend to people is that when you're working with gen fill, just to delete or rasterize that gen fill layer, if you know for sure, oh look, <laughs> I don't know what viol what guidelines it violated oh, interesting. in this case. I'm gonna try it one more time, and if not, we'll leave it. The shadow's not really that big of an issue, but that's this is why it's still in beta. We're still working out the kinks, or you guys are working out the kinks. I don't work for Adobe. I'm, I'm not doing anything <laughs> with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but the point is, and there you go, Like it gave us, I don't know. It, it's interesting. It's having a, a weird issue, but it's okay. We, yeah. we don't need to worry about that. The point that I was trying to make is that you can delete the variations you don't need, just because why waste that extra space on this file? I don't want to bloat the file, so just delete the stuff you won't need. So now I can come back here with the same selection. Uh, if you hold Control on Windows, that's Command in the Mac, and click on the layer thumbnail here, a uh, layer mask thumbnail. And by the way, I'm going to make the layer thumbnail larger by going into the panel options here and choosing this box. That way, it's easier to see. There it is. Oh. I can now click on this um, original layer and create a layer mask. And actually, you know what I just realized? I, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to press the D key and I'm going to duplicate. Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. And and we want to do that because we always want the original image to be the bottom layer. Like, absolutely. That is just rule across the board. Always have the original image as the bottom layer and you can make a copy of mm -hmm. it, but you always want that basis just in case you mess up. Yeah. You move something or you need to restore, always have it at the bottom. Yeah, and I know that Andrew and me, our heads are like on the layers panel right now, so hopefully people can see and I don't know. Oh yeah, can we flip us yeah, to the other side? Yeah, flip us to the side, please. But um, here's a, a, a trick for you guys. So we, um, I want this layer to be on top, right? And obviously I can click and drag it and there it is. It's on top, right? Super easy, super simple. But what if you're working with multiple monitors? I don't know how many monitors you usually work with, Andrew, at home. Four. Four. There you go. <laughs> so perfect for you. I work with uh, two. I used to work with three and then it became too crazy. So I, I, I downsized to two. But the point is, is if I'm working on, I usually have a monitor on my left hand side where I'm, I'm working and then all my panels and stuff is on this side. So I'm just looking at the full resolution image on, on this side. Mm -hmm. So if I needed to drag a layer up, I have to you know scroll my mouse all the way to the other side and drag it, right? But instead, you can just use a keyboard shortcut, right? If you press the control key and the right bracket key, it moves the layer up. Control, left bracket key moves the layer down. And that's the command key on the Mac. Now in this case, I'm just gonna create a bunch of empty layers just to show you. So if you have a bunch of layers, right? and you want to quickly jump that layer to the very top, instead of just pressing Control in the right bracket key and go one at a time, you can actually hold Control, Shift, right bracket key, and it just jumps it to the top of the layer stack. Yep. So Same in Illustrator. If you're working in Illustrator, there, exact same hockey. There you go. Um, cool. So now that I have this layer on top, I'm going to use the same select subject. Hopefully, it doesn't uh, take as long as it did last time. And someone is saying if you add a period sometimes on those, it will generate if it's like for some random reason getting it. Oh, interesting. So Fine. maybe we can try that. Um, and <clears throat> a question coming in from chat that I'm still trying to figure out. I, I'm not sure what you mean, so let us know. When you select or create pixels, is there a standard pixel rate for an image or this high frame? Yeah, I don't know what that. Can you uh, Not clarify sure really, on yeah. that question, please? Uh, we'll similar to the show last, is there a maximum of layers you can add onto the mask? Maximum layers you can add to the mask. Well, the, the so uh, uh, um, I'm going to explain this, and maybe you can clarify the question. When you create a layer, uh, there's only one mask per layer. So you, theoretically, you can add two, right? Because I can click on the layer mask icon again, and that adds a vector mask. Yep. But that's a different kind of mask. So a pixel-based mask, you can only add one per layer. 
Now, a way of kind of hacking that will be to create a group yes. and put that in there, and then you can create a layer mask. And if you wanted to like hack, oops, sorry, uh, um, a mask on the actual group, not on the, uh, not on the layer. But oh, it looks like my Photoshop uh, beta here is. We did it. We did it. it we did it. Again. Got a freeze. <laughs> um, so yes, I was. It's funny that you said that because I was going to talk about that too. Um, and if we want to hop over, let me open Photoshop real quick just so I can show that while yep. you restart. Um, are we back? No, not yet. Okay, cool. It's still. So I'm going to boot up real quick and show you all. So if we wanted to, we're going to use this picture of Ryan Selvi, uh, who is our one of our friends and streamers. Is if we want to mask out, right? We're just going to mask out Ryan. We can make the mask here. We can go to select subject, um, or actually we can just go to properties and go to remove background, which is great, awesome tool that works really well. So we have the mask here, but let's say that we also wanted to mask out like his hair. You can't do that, but if you do add a group or just group it control G, then you can add another mask on top of that. And now we can mask within. So you can see there, I am using the black over here and the brush. And then if I hit X, go back to the white, I can brush that back in. And you can notice that as I brush over the outside of his head, right, it's not bringing back the background because the background is gone within the group. And now we're just masking the group on top of it, if it makes any sense. Um, and then we're no, back. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm trying to get. Oh us no, back that was that was the whole lesson. Okay, great. Okay, so well, we can we can come back to. This, oh, so, yeah. Camera two. Hey, chat. Uh, what's up? So, chat. Let me know um, <laughs> what you want to see on the rest of the stream. If there are photos, or if there are questions you have about Photoshop or Illustrator, if you have questions about generative fill, if you have questions about generative recolor, any of that stuff, let me know in chat, and we'll try to cover it either this session or during the next next live stream. I'm doing the next live stream in Illustrator, so we're gonna have some fun, and I'll show you how to do some animate uh, animation and tracing masks on masks, yes, I do think that you can continue to make groups and masks. Yeah, you can actually, in Photoshop, you can nest up to nine groups, I believe. Yes. So then in theory, if I come here and I mask out like across his eyes, and then I make another group and nest that here, I believe when I paint back in, yeah, nothing is gonna paint out there. Okay, so chat. You can, you can see, you can go as much as you mm -hmm. want. There's not a great workflow for this. There's mm -hmm. not a good reason for this, um, but it is a, a great way to do it. And just while we wait, I do want to show you something that I love using Generative Fill for, and that's the new tool that is Generative Expand. And so this is actually a great use case for our friend Ryan. So we have Ryan here, and we want this photo of Ryan to be a little bit taller. All I need to do is grab mm -hmm. my crop tool, which is just C, and I'm going to click and drag down because I want more Ryan, don't we all? <laughs> and then I just hit Generative Expand and watch what happens. It's actually gonna fill in the rest of this image and while it crops it out, it is adding content within that cropped out area, uh, which is really cool. So awesome. Interesting to elaborate on the pixel question. When Asus was doing pixels on the woman's leg, he was adding pixels. How many pixels are you allowed to add to an image? Okay, I think that that's the expand, yeah. expand and contract. Yeah, yeah. so um, I can do it. I have I have it here if you don't mind switching over to my screen. Oh yes, let's go. Yeah, so if you go into the maximum, you can expand 500 pixels. So from one pixel, and actually if you switch it to roundness, you can probably go to like 0 0.2 pixels all the way up to 500. Yes. Which I think that 500, I mean, there wouldn't be a, mm, there might be a reason 500, but 500 is probably gonna push you pretty close to the edges of whatever document you're working mm -hmm. on, especially if you're just working on, um, yeah, like a digital image, like yeah. a slide or something. Yeah. 500 is gonna be pretty substantial. I don't see why you would go past, well, I mean, you never know, right? But just speaking broadly, you probably would only do just a couple pixels for most things. Yes. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, we're she back. She is separated from the background. She is separated from the background. We it got just, rid of the shadow. Yeah, so um, it looks like the, uh, the second time I tried the gen fill on that layer, it removed it just fine, so no issues. Cool. It's a little left over here, but it doesn't matter. And also what I did is I took the original picture and just ran a select subject and now separated her from the background. So now we're basically back to the original picture. Cool. So why do all this work, Andrew? <laughs> that's, that's very true. Yeah. It's like we've been working for 15 minutes and we have yeah. the same image. Yeah, we did the it. same image, right? <laughs> so um, again, you know, I, I like to, since I've, I've primarily worked in a professional environment for like almost 20 years now, like I have to be very careful with how I name layers in my organization. So I always like to name my layers. Um, this one I'm just gonna call body because that's her body. Here's another tip for you. If you're uh, writing the name of a layer, 
and you can press the tab key and it'll switch over to the next layer so that you can rename it. So this one I can just call <sighs> shadow, tap the tab key again. This one will call like like uh, remove. I'll just call it remove because I know I'm removing her body and then the background can keep the original name. But using that tab key just switches over to the next layer. Man, I love watching your streams because like I think I'm pretty advanced and pretty expert, and then something <laughs> super basic like that is like, oh, you hit tab and you can like name your layers one by one. Like I literally will click through right. each one. Uh, so I love just the little tips that are right. fleeting. That's like that changed my workflow completely. Yeah. So that's that's my new thing for going forward. That I'm just gonna just share all this random stuff and see who it helps. You yes. Know? Thank you. Um, so so now that I have this this layer just with my runner, I'm gonna convert it into a smart object. For those of you that don't know, a smart object is a container that can hold one or more layers, and it allows you to apply non-destructive adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations. What that means is if you change your mind, you can always change the adjustment later or just delete the entire thing and start from scratch and you don't lose the original image. Now, now that this is uh, in a separate layer, Andrew, we can uh, do whatever type of adjustments we want, right? For example, we can go into like a curves adjustment layer and maybe, you know, we darken the background so she pops more or maybe the background is not bright enough so we brighten it up, whatever you want to do. But you can see now how we have total control of this image without affecting the main subject. Or we can go and apply a smart filter by going into image, adjustment, and same thing, curves. But now this is a smart filter. The difference is that this is not really a layer. It's a stackable filter and it only has one mask. So if I were to add maybe like a, I don't know, like a, just so that it's obvious, like a threshold adjustment here. Actually, no, I'm on the mask. So you see the white focus, the white outline? That's on the mask. So I need to be on the actual layer. That little focus it needs to be there. And actually, since uh, Photoshop froze, it didn't keep my large icon. So that way you guys can see better. See the focus here? Um, if you go into image, adjustment, and apply like, I don't know, vibrance. Vibrance is a smart way of uh, adding saturation. It protects skin tones and it first targets pixels that are lowly saturated. So it's not just a global saturation. It's more of a smart way of adding saturation to something. But the point is, is that I only have one layer mask. So if I make an adjustment like painting with black on an area, it's going to affect both the vibrance and curves adjustment. The advantage is that it's all contained on one smart filter. So, you know, depending on your workflow or what you want to do. Yep. And someone's asking, what is a smart, smart filter? So I like to think of it as like, if you remember or have you ever seen like the transparency sheets, mm -hmm. right? It's Back like pieces school. of clear plastic mm -hmm. that you're just stacking on top of the image. So you mm -hmm. can take off the piece of plastic, you can draw on them, mm -hmm. and you still maintain your image. And so yeah. when you do a smart filter, it's not changing any of the actual pixels of that layer. It's stacking things on top of those pixels so that you can remove them, you can turn them off, you can turn them on, you can augment them. And they are basically working as like applicators to the image, not actually changing the image itself. Itself. Yep, absolutely. And now, um, so yeah, obviously one of the things you can do is uh, do color adjustments, tonal adjustments as we just saw. But another thing that becomes really cool, Andrew, is that we can completely change the action, so, so to speak, of this image. For example, one thing that we can do is we can, you know, put all this, all these layers into a smart object. By the way, I just did something without explaining it. When you click on a layer, you select it. If you hold shift and click on the bottom most layer, that you're working with, you'll select all those layers. Then you can right click and convert all those layers into a smart object. Um, like I mentioned before, this, and the reason that the uh, um, adjustment disappeared was because now that adjustment is inside of the smart object. But if I, what I really wanted to do is unlock this layer and then select all these and then right click and convert to a smart object. So now all those images are inside of a container. You can open the container by double clicking on the smart object thumbnail and there it is you can make adjustments but now we're going to treat it as a single layer right so keep things super simple super easy to work with but what i was saying is you can go into filter um, blur gallery and do something like a path blur and then you can add some speed to this image by why isn't my blur showing <laughs> oh here it is um let me just uh there it is i can just click and drag this and you know, do the direction that she's running. So maybe we'll do that. We can increase the speed. And now it looks like she's running super fast, right? Um, so it's like a cool effect that you can do if you wanted to. If you don't like it, this is the advantage of working with a smart object. You can just disable it. You can delete it, 
whatever you want. So that's why you want to work with a smart object. Um, I mentioned earlier that I work uh, a lot with um, different advertising agencies and movie studios, and a lot of the times you might apply an effect and they look at it and they want to say, you know what, we don't like it, get rid of that. Well, it's super easy when you work non-destructively. Yep. Rather than like, oh my God, I got to go find that original background. Yes. And you know, like, yeah, they're like, oh, it's a little bit too much. Can we take it down by like 10%? Yeah. And you're like, I have to do the whole thing over. Right. Uh, you can literally just click and go down by 10%. Absolutely. The other thing um, that you can do is, and again, you do this a lot in like every movie poster. So like, you know, people look great for a reason because they hire people like me to make everybody look great. <laughs> um, but another thing that you can do is you can go into edit and do something called uh, puppet warp. Um, it creates mesh. I don't like looking at the mesh. You can leave it on if you like. I click on this icon just to not look at it. It just bothers me and it, I, I don't find it. it. Doesn't, I don't understand how it works. And yeah. so I'm like, just take it away. Yeah. Uh, whatever's going on behind the scenes, I'm good. Yeah, just do it. And you can create these pins over your subject like so. And then you can, you know, move her. And since we um, filled in the background, we can move it, move her without leaving a hole, right? So maybe we want her to have like her knee higher. Maybe this leg, we want it to be further back. You know, whatever we want. You know, maybe her ankle, I want it to be. Uh, right now, it's in the Dorsey flexion, which means up. And I don't know what the other, the bottom one is called. So if somebody in the chat Who knows, <laughs> Dorsey flexion. Is? Yeah, I, I was an athlete. I grew up. Okay. You know, like I wanted to be like a. a you know, soccer player, but I was not good enough to like play pro. I played in, co uh, played in college, but then I thought, oh, maybe I can be an athletic trainer. So I took like athletic training classes, but that was Got 20 it. years ago. Anyway, so um, when you click on this icon, the little dot is filled up. If you if you hold the Alt key on Windows, that's the Option key on the Mac. You get this little circle thing. You see that little circle? You can click, and now it rotates. See how I'm rotating it? So we can rotate it. And if you don't like it, you can always delete the pin. Click on this one, hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and then rotate that one as well. So whatever, uh, whatever you want to do, right? You can, you know, move her back, forwards, whatever athletic position you want to put her in. When you click on the check mark, you'll commit the changes. This is a smart filter as well. So if I I can disable that if I don't like it, or I can enable it again. If I, you know, want to adjust it, I can double click on the Puppet Warp filter, and then I can adjust it. Anything I want to do, I can do. I literally thought that you were going to be like, but this is destructive. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's destructive. And then you're like, oh, no, it's a smart filter. I would yeah. not think that this could be a smart filter Absolutely. because it is moving the pixels. Uh, but I guess it is. That's that's crazy. Right. And again, we filled in the background. So maybe we move her further to the right. And now we have negative space to add some copy on the left hand side. Or maybe we want the copy on the right hand side. So even though. Um, Gen Phil was a minor part of this process. It still was very hel helpful and beneficial because Andrew, the opposite would have been after clone content that were fail, and I would have spent maybe 30 minutes just getting the background right. Yeah, you well, know? yeah, you would have done like a background and a runner, mm -hmm. and then like composited her out into the background, had right. to match all the toning, mm -hmm. had to match all the focus everything, and this is literally just like, oh no, we're doing that, mm -hmm. but without compositing two images together, we're compositing one image into two images, right? Absolutely. Reverse compositing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so now that we have our two layers, we can, you know, create as many adjustment layers as we want on top of this and, you know, make whatever adjustment. Something that I recommend doing, this is not a composite, so it doesn't really apply to this, but the, the tip applies to composites, is, uh, one trick is just to create a color lookup adjustment layer and find a, a LUT, like a filter, if you will, almost like an Instagram filter, if you will, that kind of like applies a color tone, maybe that one. And that way, all the elements have a similar co uh, color tone applied to it. So it makes it feel more cohesive and as a single unit. Yep. And throwing stuff on top of an image that is a bunch of things can save you a bunch of time. Like You won't have to go in and individually change each element. A mm -hmm. lot of times doing something like this yeah. brings it together enough mm -hmm. to where it still looks fine. It looks like it is the same And image. that's the key word, enough, because almost with every project, you can spend months and months and months, and you'll never really be there. But at some point, you're just not getting any real returns. And the yes. changes are so minuscule that it's not worth the time. And sometimes just enough is good enough. Actually, now that I work with uh, like movie posters, when I go to the movie theaters, I'm always analyzing them. Like, oh yeah, I could tell they didn't have time to do this part. Or like, oh yeah, I could tell that, you know, they ran out of time here, <laughs> you know, because it happens to me too. Yep, that's you funny. Um, okay, so there was, do we want to try the other mystery workflow that you were thinking about? Oh, why not? Okay, um, so before the show, Jesus was uh, doing something with money 
And I don't know what we're gonna do, but it was very much a, I don't know if we can do this live, but we're gonna try. So that's what we're gonna do. And someone's saying, what does cohesive mean? So cohesive means that within an image, you don't have something that looks blue and something that looks yellow, right? It looks like it is the same, right? One piece that you've composited in doesn't look like it has winter tones everything looks like it has summer tones, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's the toning, it's the lighting, all needs to be cohesive, just means that it's working together and it looks like it's one image. So um, since Photoshop crashed, it looks like I hadn't saved the the photo that I was, I was working on, but I can still show it. Fun. Um, what I'm gonna do is just to make things super easy to work with because, you know, we are in Photoshop beta and this is a giant Adobe stock photo that I like downloaded like a this minute ago. 24 inches? <laughs> yeah, it's like a huge. 24 by 14, 300. That is thing. a massive yeah. file. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna keep this. Yeah, this is this is perfect. We don't need to spend uh, so much time on that. So I'm just gonna press OK to resize this. This is why uh, Photoshop is going super slow right now. Yep. Oh my God, Down. look, it's almost 100 megabytes. I was gonna say five, five yeah. megs from 100. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. This should this should make it easier to work with, and I'll save this file that way. You know, there's no issues. And actually, let me see if I might have saved it in the desktop without like thinking. That way, we can just go back. Oh, and, what joy that would be! No, yeah, composite merge runner. Oh, maybe it's this one. Oh no! Oh yeah! Oh, oh there it is! I did save we it. We did it! Yay! We sa I did save it. Great money. Notice that the tab that I'm working on now is called recover. Yes. Um, by the way, here's another quick random trip uh, trick that. Um, would have been great for the situation had I been thinking and not worried about something else. So, um, you know how I had these different tabs open, right? Yep. Um, you can actually right click and choose close other so that it close all the other tabs except the one that you're on. Oh, so interesting. So I can cl click on close others and it'll ask me, do you want to save this? Um, yeah, I'll save it, why not? And then the other one, I didn't make any changes, so it'll just close it. So if you have 100 tabs open, for example, but you only want to keep one open, yep. just right click and cho uh, choose close others. Right now, it's grayed out because there's some other tabs open. Yep. You know what I want there? I want a save all to mm. where like you yeah. click it and then it saves every tab that's save open. Save all others. Yes, That'd be exactly. Cool. That'd be and then cool. it just like saves everything. Yeah. Photoshop team, I'm there coming you for you. And an an another useful uh, option in this dropdown is the Reveal and Explorer. That way, you, it'll just open up the, the file. If you're on a Mac, though, it'll say Reveal on Finder, I believe. Yep. Um, I'm a and Windows user, so it, it says Explorer, but yeah, Finder if, on, on a Mac. If you're a live streamer, uh, or if you've done live streaming in the past, you know, or I mean, maybe some other things where you're displaying images, a lot of times you'll put an image into a program and then it will cache that image into its own folder. Mm -hmm. And so when you're trying to update something, you're updating the original image, but it won't update because it's using the one from the cache folder. So this is a great use case of that, mm -hmm. is you can open it in Photoshop and then it'd be like, okay, where is this file and how do I figure it out? Yep, absolutely. So I was gonna use, um, you know, Gen fill to generate a face here, or you can you know generate a face by applying different Photoshop filters. I'm not going to worry about that. I don't know how much time we have, but there's a lot more that we that we, we like that I want to do. But the the real like super pro tip that I wanted to show you guys, I'll start with that, and then I'll worry about Gen fill. Like you guys know Gen fill, you, um, so I assume that other people probably won't know this next trick as much. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Here's a question from you. Yeah. How do you do that? Do what? So like once you make a selection, mm. how do you change the selection? I Because there's so many times that I'll make one and then yeah. I deselect and redo it. I, I should have uh, pointed that out. So when you click and drag, you'll make a selection and that'll be... If you can imagine that it, it's easier to explain with the rectangular uh, marquee tool. So if you click and drag, it'll start from the corner, either the left if I drag to the right, or the right top corner if I drag to the left, yep. right? But in this case, now imagine that I'm still using the uh, square. Imagine this is a square, but I wanna match the like edges of this, but notice that my initial selection doesn't really reach the edge. Well, what you can do is hold the space bar and then now you can move it. And now I'm moving this around and I'm going to try to align it as best as I can. And actually, what I really want to do is align the, the inside, not the outside. But the point is, is now that I'm... And I'm holding Shift, by the way, to keep it constrained, because I do want as perfect... So then, how do you, once you've made the selection, how do you change the size of the selection? Can you change the size of the selection once you've let go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, like right now, I'm, I'm going to let go, right? Yep. So I let go. There's the selection. You can right-click, and you can select um, Transform Selection. 
and then that'll bring the transformation handles and I can resize oh. my selection. See okay. that? Okay, wow. Um, yep. Magic. Magic, right? Photoshop magic here. Photoshop, I mean, that's what we're all about at Adobe Live, so. Anyway, so the reason that I created this selection was because I needed to have um, a center point, right? I'm looking to like apply something to the, um, around the edges of this coin, and I need a center point. So I'm gonna click and drag this guide and place it here. Then I'm gonna click and drag this guide down, and it's snapping, by the way. This is why I needed the selection, because it just snaps into the center, just snaps. See, it snaps right there. Um, if it's not snapping for you, what you need to do is go into the view menu and make sure that snap is enabled. Otherwise, it won't snap into place. Um, by the way, uh, here's another trick. I'm gonna zoom in. And sometimes you don't want things to snap, right? So maybe you're creating a selection and when you're creating the selection, it just snaps on there and like, I don't want it to snap. I just wanna go like one pixel like further and it's snapping. Yep. What you can do is anytime, and not just with a selection to in any tool that you're in Photoshop and it snaps to something and you don't want it to snap, hold the control key and Photoshop will no longer snap. And now see how I'm just one pixel away from that oh, line? Interesting. And I can go as many pixels as I want. So, so snapping happens when you have snap enabled and then you reach something that Photoshop thinks you want to snap to. But if you want to not snap it, you got to move it pretty far away. And when you do, that's maybe not where you want it, that selection or object or, or whatever it is. Sometimes this happens when you're moving objects. So holding the control key or the command key on the Mac makes it so that Photoshop ignores the snap and you can just put that there. Interesting. So that's another, another tip that, again, I don't know if you'll ever need, but it's there. Um, two snaps from a snaps. Two yes. snaps from a snaps. So now let's just um, let's go into like the custom shape tool here. Um, yeah, my Photoshop is being a little <laughs> not not cooperative. There we go. And you know, actually, here's another. Is that a capybara? That, what is the shape that is there? I don't know. It looks like a something. Like what is that? I don't know what that is. A lion. Oh, it's or like something? a panther. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was looking more for like a star. So usually if you want to search for a shape, what you can do is go into window and select shapes and then it gives you a search bar, right? So then now I can like search for something specific. So I want a star. Are there, there's no stars. Well, maybe there is. I don't know why Adobe did this, but if you click on the flyout menu, you can choose legacy shapes and more. And now it gives you a ton of other shapes that were just hidden. Why did Photoshop decide Whoa. to hide this in Photoshop 2019? I have no idea, but they're there. You can still yeah. access them. So then if I if I type the word star, hopefully there's, oh, there we go. We have that star and we have, we have different kinds of stars right now. Cool. So now there's a whole lot more that weren't there before. So maybe this is a star that I like and I'm just gonna create a tiny little baby star right here that um, goes around. And by the way, the reason that, um, Oh no, there you go, that works, right? So in this, for this example, forget about the color. Um, we will, I can show you like some coloring tricks later, but for now, oops, I'm in the move tool. Wow, my Photoshop is just not being <laughs> very cooperative Having today. some troubles. Yeah, um, let me undo that. Yeah, that's so, so odd. Let me try doing that shape one more time. Uh, and Chad is saying, can we go through the snapping process again? Yes, we'll go through it one more time right after uh, we get the stars in here. Yeah, we gotta get some stars. All right, cool, so there's my star. There we are, there we go, that's the star. And now, with the move tool active, and I'm gonna save this because I'm worried that this is coming Right, through. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pretty far ahead that I don't wanna start again. Okay, yeah, I don't care about the name for now. I just want to have it saved and you know don't show again. This is just you know I don't need to worry about compatibility. Compatibility. I don't know why I'm having so much. Oh, and by the way, I mentioned that this was a new installation of Photoshop, and something that I always disable right away, and something that was giving me issues because I'm not used to this, is I usually disable auto select because I don't want Photoshop selecting everything when I click on it. This is why it's, I was creating selections yeah. and moving things around. I go back and forth between yeah. that like so much in my workflow, yeah. and I'll try to select it when it's turned off, and then I can't select it when it's turned. And I go back and forth, and I need to figure out how, what my workflow is, right. that I don't have to turn it on and off all the time. Right. So what I'm gonna do now is put that star there and it's right in the center, right? So what I can do now is press Control T, Command T to transform and 
notice that there is no, um, I call it a pivot point. I think Adobe calls it a reference point. Um, you can check on this box, and now it adds this little reference point. And the reason I call it a pivot point is that's the way I like to think about it. It just pivots from that point. So I can click and drag. Whoops. I needed to just drag this little guy. If you're having trouble selecting it, another trick I like to do is just click on the bottom one here in the little bottom square, boop, and it drags it down, and then you can drag it out. I don't know why that works, but it works sometimes. Oh, and if you want to, stick around for the next stream, which is coming up in like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this in Illustrator. Great. So then, now, I can press, um, like, you know, like maybe we wanted, like, I don't know, like, start, like, we'll just say 90 degrees, right? So it'll place a star there. That's it. Boom, 90 degrees. And I can press Enter, and it moved the star 90 degrees, right? But I want like maybe four stars. So how do I duplicate what I just did, like without too much work? What I can now do is press Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter T. That's Command, Option, Shift, and the letter T. And Photoshop will now repeat that transformation so it places the stars 90 degrees apart. Isn't that cool? Yes. Now, here's another cool trick. Um, and it's making a new layer for each of those as well. Absolutely. Really cool. Yep. And it's making a new layer for each of those as well. Here's another trick. I deleted the other ones, by the way. And now I have this main one. I can also go with Control T, Command T to transform. That will transform my selection. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to move the reference point down to the center as best as I can. Oh, it looks like I missed it. Let me try to grab it again. I like that you have a ruler, you have a guide, a bounding box, and then <laughs> the pivot point. <laughs> Trying to <laughs> get the pixel perfect click on that. What I wish is that it would snap to the center. That's a, a request I would have. Oh, yes. Anyway, so now. We um, like, for example, we did four stars, right? But maybe we can't do the math. Like, like how many? Like, um, if if we wanted to have like I don't know we'll, we'll, a random number, like thirteen or I don't know, yep. fourteen. Um, if we wanted fourteen stars, like what's the appropriate percentage, right? Well, I don't know. So three sixty divided by fourteen, and there you go. So twenty five point seven one. And right. then that's my favorite thing is if you don't know this, yeah. this isn't just for this tool. Like every dialog, every box dialog box has does math. math. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so now I can do the same keyboard shortcut: Control Alt Shift T, and now I have. I will get exactly what was it? Fourteen. And yep. It'll be a complete circle as soon as I press Control Alt Shift T um, fourteen times, and there you go. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really powerful tool, and I highly recommend you all try it. Can Doing, we try something? Yeah, what do you want to try? Can we select, so basically the end of what I want to go mm -hmm. is have all those as a selection, mm -hmm. and then generative fill with like engraved star. Okay, and let's, see let's try that. if it will like match into that. the coin, if we can like replace them. We're, we're, we're literally trying to forge money right now. So, um, here you go. I'm going to just do it super quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Shift, select all, Control E to merge them all into one layer, then hold the Control key and click on the layer thumbnail to just make a selection. And why is it only one selected if I select it all? That's so Was weird. there a selection already happening? Maybe? Let me see. Oh, there you go. Sorry. I was. Yeah, there's something going on. Um, there we go. Cool. Perfect. So now your idea, Andrew, is to go to Generative Fill yep. with that selection. And then type in, what do you want me to like type in? Engraved copper star. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. Yeah, let's see. I mean, this is why we're here, right? Just to have fun and experiment. Because I'm thinking for like stylistically, if you have like a copper coin, if you can leverage that with generative fill mm -hmm. to get that kind of engraved style. Or if this is just going to be like a total nightmare and not work at all. Okay. I mean, it's not. It's not, it's not bad. Not terrible. It definitely you know got what? the style. It might. It might be better if you just did one star. I, I agree. Yeah. And then 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 do this trick on. Yeah. You know. But it did get like the the etchings and the lighting right, right. on everything, Here's and so I'm actually very impressed. Okay, so here's another trick. If I hold Control and click, it'll uh, select everything, right? But I only want to select one star. What do I do? Well, select the um, rectangular marquee tool and hold Alt 
and shift, and you see how the, the cursor now um, has an X? If yes. I just hold Alt, it has a minus, so that's subtracting. Adding Alt and Shift, and that's option, by the way, on the Mac, it has that little X. That means inter uh, intersect. So I can okay. click and drag and make a selection out of just that one selection, and that's the only selection that it keeps, and it deselects everything else. That's cool. Um, so now let's try that again, just on that one star. So maybe maybe that'll work better. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Um, let's see. What, what was the exact? And this is another cool thing. The layer name becomes the the what do you call it? The um, prompt. Prompt. Thank yep. you. Engraved copper star. Yeah. So I'm gonna just copy it and paste it. So we do exactly the same thing. This is a proper test, I would say. We'll we'll see what happens if we get a better result just with one star. We're scientists. Yeah. <laughs> This is, we're following the scientific method here. We're, we're trying to, we have a theory, now we got a, uh, or we have a hypothesis, and then we're trying to make it into yes, a theory. Yes, yes. And that's what we love about generative fill and a lot of the like kind of Firefly integrations is we don't know what they're going to be. And so it's fun to test and try new things and see what we can generate and what we can make mm. happen. It, that's pretty dang good. I think it's great, yeah. And look, we have different. I like that one the best. That, I don't that know. one, the lighting is impeccable on that one. Yeah. So, you know, we could try that same <coughs> trick and just put stars all around this thing, you know? Yep. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay, that's good to know for, um, so let's say that we did a generative fill remove on the head and then we could put something else there mm -hmm. that was then like engraved in. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a really interesting use case to get a stylistic approach to right. simple shapes by using like a foundation of brushed metal or bronze or coin or something like that. I think is really interesting. Right. Um, another random tri uh, trick that, you know, you may never need. You know when you create a guide, you click and drag and you're like, oh god, I wanted this to be a vertical guide, not a horizontal. What do you yes. do? Hold the Alt key on Windows, the Option key on the Mac, and it just becomes a vertical one, and then you can place it. So that's another random trick. What's going on in your brain? How do you have just all this information tucked <laughs> Dude, away? Dude, I don't know. And I was just talking to someone about this, and this is what you and I were talking before the stream. That like from now on, I'm, all my everything I do, I'm just gonna start spilling stuff. Knowledge. And yes. let's see if if people are gonna be like, all right, bro, just get to the point. Yes. Um, all right, but, we got yeah. about 10 minutes left. Cool. So chat, uh, hello, Onate is here saying hi, everyone. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in chat. And if you, oh, actually, can you show the snapping thing one more time? Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. And then if you have questions for anything in Illustrator, that's where we're going next. We're gonna be working in Illustrator for the next hour right after this. So put your questions. If you're struggling with the project, if you're trying to figure something out, I'm here to help you. Um, so put it in chat for us. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rasterize all this, and I think this might give us a, di give us a different, um, yeah, right here. See how it just snaps to that and does what those lines are, but maybe I just want to like not snap. I just want to be able to like place it there without it snapping to that area. I can hold the control key on Windows as the command key on the Mac and look, no more snapping. It just oh, it actually just snapped only in the very center, but I can still go one pixel. Yep. You know, so I can just barely do one pixel. The example I used earlier was with the rectangular marquee tool that if I wanted to create a selection that just goes one pixel past the guy there, it's it snaps. So if you hold Control or Command on the Mac, it doesn't snap, and I can just do one pixel in in that area. Yep. And how do you turn snapping on and off? Yes, you go into the View menu, and you can just press on uh, on this icon uh, on this menu here. Um, right now, I just realized one other thing. Back when I was um, starting out, I would hide guys by pressing. Control H, which which hides all extras, which is not bad in this case. There's no nothing wrong with that. But that hides all the extras. The actual keyboard shortcut for hiding guides, only guides, not the other extras. Semicolon. It's right? Control Semicolon. That's correct. Control Semicolon, and it hides those specific guides. And by the way, to bring up the rulers, Control R, Command R on the Mac. Yep. And someone is saying. Would you want to erase the background of the star? So what was happening there is basically uh, generative fill is going to fill the entire area that you have selected. And so I think maybe we had the star selected, but it was a little larger, and so it will fill that extra mm -hmm. area as well to help blend it out. If we just had the star in there, it might not look like it has a soft, like smooth edge. And so a lot of times you don't want just the object. Mm -hmm. You do want to keep a little bit around the object uh, yeah. to be helpful. So I have a, an example for that. Oh, <laughs> a demo. How much time do we have? Uh, we got like six minutes. This should be enough. Cool. So, you know, Sometimes you may be working on a project like this, and you know, like, oh, you know, what? it might be kind of cool if we had like an interesting object here, right? Like, whatever. So maybe you can do something like, uh, 
you know, old red truck. You know, that's that's what I want to generate there. An old red truck, right? So I'm going to hit generate and we'll see what we get. It'll take a few moments for Photoshop to send this to the cloud and some, I'm assuming monkeys are gonna draw that That's and then it. send it right back to us. Uh, are the old school like automatrons or yeah, whatever? Yeah, the uh, like yeah, robot yeah, guys yeah. are drawing? Yes, that's what it is, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't know what creatures is drawing this, but as soon as they're done drawing it, they're gonna send it right back to us. You know what I want? I want a game. I want a game while it's generating, mm -hmm. like a little like Flappy Bird or something that I just play perpetually throughout the day as mm -hmm. I'm generating things using Cherry right. Fill. Wow, this, this is taking longer than it's I It's really thinking about it. This is one of the longest generations I've seen. Yeah, me too, wow. It, this It's gonna be a really nice car. I know, I know. And? It's gonna be like and? not a car. Okay, there we go. We got a couple nice. Pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So I don't know which one that we like better. I guess it doesn't. Okay, we'll just call that one good, right? Yep. And um, the question is, like, you know, it's got, it's got like a back, like background around it, right? So like, the demo that I'm, I'm trying to explain is, what if this is uh, this truck's amazing and we really like it, but you know what? After all, all of this, I now feel that the left hand side of the image is really top heavy. Mm -hmm. Another thing uh, I could do is move this over to this side, but I'm gonna run into a problem, which is the um, background no longer matches, right? Yep. One of the things you can do is click on the generate button again, and hopefully it doesn't take as long, and it'll generate oh. a new truck on this new area with the new background now. That's gonna run into another problem. You might be totally happy with this result, and, and that's cool, but I'll explain what the problem is as soon as this generates. And there you go, so faster than the last time. So, you know, whether you like this <laughs> truck better or not, I don't know, um, but you know, there it is, it now matches. That's interesting. But I was happy with this truck. I don't like all those other trucks, so what do I do? Well, with this truck, uh, now that we have this truck selected here, you can go into the select menu and choose subject, and Photoshop will hopefully select the truck. If not, we can do those other masking tricks I was talking about earlier, and we can mask the truck so that you know the truck remains the same, the lighting still works, everything still works, but the the um, truck will now be masked out. And I don't know why everything is just not I know. cooperating today. Thinking of selecting the subject. Yeah. Um, and if you want to, that's interesting, that select subject. So mine has trouble sometimes removing background. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. Okay, we have like three minutes left. Yeah. Uh, so let me see, I don't have any uh, landscapes on here. Um, oh, I think it, it... Did it do it? It's not Photoshop, it's, oh wait, hold on, it's, it's thinking Photoshop, come on. It's beta. thinking. And this is, again, this is not the full release of Photoshop, this is the beta version and it's beta for a reason. Yes. You know? Sorry, I was waving, Micah put a waving hand emoji and oh, I can't help but not react to emojis. <laughs> Um, but if you want to stick around right after this, um, I'll be taking over and we'll be doing some stuff in Illustrator and Adobe Express. What we're gonna be doing is we are gonna be creating some animated stickers mm. to put maybe on uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. to put on your social media, to use. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build them all in Illustrator. I'm gonna show you some hacks for creating quick shapes. We're gonna do some popsicles, we're gonna do some lollipops, we'll do some beach balls, some suns. And then we will take those into Adobe Express without having to change our file directly from our Illustrator file, we'll take it into Adobe Express, mm -hmm. and then we'll animate that, render it as a video, and then convert it into a bunch of GIFs right. so that we can toss them on top of things. So uh, we'll be starting that in probably like six, seven minutes here, so make sure you stick around with that. Uh, and someone's saying, if rulers uh, <laughs> slow down Photoshop, <laughs> no, ru rulers are fine. Um, I, I, I'd i assume that rulers are fine. Yeah. Uh, the thing that always gets me is having stuff in your desktop supposedly is bad, and my desktop is just a full on flea market. Um, okay, <laughs> yep. cool. Task manager, this there is the way go. to end of the this stream, is baby. The way, yep. That's the way to do it. Um, so I'm actually just gonna real quick put, I'm gonna put uh, Ryan in a different outfit. Why not? Yeah, why not? Let's so um, we got a few seconds, why not? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we did a generative expand here on Ryan and then I'm going to grab the lasso tool and I am just going to grab all the way around him and we're gonna put him in a different outfit. Chat, what do you wanna see him in? I'm gonna do a tuxedo to start with. Tuxedo jacket. We're gonna render that and we're gonna get a nice little tuxedo jacket uh, over Ryan. Super easy, super fun. If you haven't yet, play around with generative fill. It's really, really fun to play around with. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, he got, 
<laughs> he must be Italian. I don't, yeah, I don't know how he got the the hand in there. Um, that okay, that got a little wonky. All right, this looks. I mean, he's pretty classy, pretty classy guy right here. But see, but um, the thing is now, if you don't like the hand, you can just focus on the hand, right? Yes, you don't exactly. have to redo the whole thing. Yep. And so, if you want to get that, you can go over to the Creative Cloud Desktop app, scroll down to Beta Apps, and just download the Photoshop Beta. You can see a big banner, and that will give you generative fill for you to play around with, as well as generative expand. Mm -hmm. And someone says superhero uniform. Don't worry, I'm here. I will give you what you want. <laughs> um, superhero uniform, and then we will end the stream with this. Uh, Jesus, any advice to people playing around, working with generative fill, working with Firefly integrations? Just try it. Don't be scared. Like, there's no right or wrong. Feel free to experiment with it any way you like. <laughs> try to try to break Photoshop. That's hilarious. Stapler. <laughs> The stapler. The, this is. I like how he's got that little house on the on, on his little. Yes, this is hundred percent. He's like a real estate agent that's uh -huh. like trying to do like we have super deals yes, this weekend yes. only. Um, uh, thanks for joining us. Stick around in five minutes. I'll be coming back with Illustrator. We'll be doing all kinds of fun stuff. Think of your favorite summer memories. Put them in chat mm -hmm. because I will be creating some stickers for you. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you.